Welcome everyone. Hello. Um, my name is Kathleen Kierleis. I'm the Vice Chancellor of Administration and Finance here at UMass Boston. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Construction and Planning Projects Brown Bag presentation. Today we have a full agenda of information planned. While you may have been away for much of the last year remote from campus, um, there's been plenty of work going on and we are happy to be able to um, inform you about much of this work today. Uh, you will be able to hear about um, some updates in our facilities area, the latest on the SDQD project, um, the latest on many of the other construction projects that have been going on on campus, and then some of our planning projects as well. Um, we, this Today's session will be recorded, so it will be made available to the campus community after the session. So if folks were unable to attend today, they can view the session at their um, convenience. So without much further ado, I will go to the next slide. I'm happy to announce that we've made two key hires in the facilities area in the last several months. Um, we've hired Carl Erickson as the Director of Project Management. Many of you may know Carl from his days at the UMass Building Authority when he was assigned to some projects here on our campus, but I'm pleased to announce that he is now a member of the UMass Boston team, so you'll get to hear from him today. And then we've also had the opportunity to hire Dennis Swinford as the Director of Campus Planning. And Dennis comes to us with many years of experience in the campus planning area, and I'm sure that you'll be pleased to meet him and hear about the um, latest in campus planning. We also have taken the opportunity to make some operational changes that we hope will streamline and provide a process to deal with uh, space on campus. So the space committee has been brought back to life, and we will talk about that a little bit. And then also there's a space working group that's going to be working with the campus community to prepare items that then go before the space committee. So without much further ado, I will turn the presentation over to Mike Kearns, who's the Associate Vice Chancellor for Facilities here at UMass Boston, to um, go to the next step. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Good afternoon, everyone. Mike Kearns, Associate Vice Chancellor for Facilities, Planning and Construction. Uh, this slide is, I'm sure, an eye test for all of you, but what I really wanted to show, not so much the detail, is the processes the processes and the operational um, upgrade that Kathleen mentioned. This is the process flow for any space changes, uh, moves, or initiations of projects. Um, our planning department with Dennis and Simon, now that it is staffed up and Dennis is also in place now, uh, are where the process originates. So any any department, anybody that is initiating, like I said, a move, a change, a project, or any space, anything that impacts space, would start by uh, putting in a space request to our planning department. It would move to the space working group, which is, has representatives from all of the major uh, factions on campus, and that it would work through the process and get to the space committee, who is, uh, is um, made up of senior leadership um, of UMass Boston. So um, there's a, now a formal process. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy, I think. So um, everybody is um, required to do this if they wanna make any changes to uh, space on campus. Uh, it will be a much more effective approach uh, going forward. Thank you. The next slide. So this is, uh, this is me, Mike. Okay, I'll turn um, it over to Simon, campus planner. Thanks. Uh, I'm just going to briefly uh, outline the uh, history here um, of the campus master plan to put our construction projects into context before talking about uh, any the sort of current major uh, project SDQD, which uh, Kathleen mentioned earlier. So by way of background, um, the campus construction uh, was completed at Columbia Point in 1974. It was designed for uh, 10,000 students and essentially comprise the older buildings uh, you're familiar with. So Wheatley, McCormack, Science, Healy, Quinn and Service and Supply. Uh, these all sit on top of a plaza with two levels of parking garage underneath, uh, within which all our utilities were suspended from the ceiling. So in the 1960s and 70s, Columbia Point wasn't the most desirable address in the city. Uh, so the urban planning of that time envisaged in looking fortress you can probably see from the appearance of the um, campus, uh, which you drove in, uh, park never interacted with your surroundings. So unfortunately, construction problems surfaced pretty quickly. Uh, one of the major problems was in the parking garages where concrete began detaching from the rebar as a result of salinity in the environment. 
Uh, these did crystallize in 2006 when a large piece of concrete uh, detached from the ceiling uh, and crushed the faculty member's car, at which point we closed the garages. Uh, in parallel with this, enrollment had grown to almost 15,000 students, far outstripping the original capacity of 10,000, whilst we hadn't built any new academic buildings uh, since opening. So at that point, the university was faced with a a uh, critical decision, do we invest hundreds of millions of dollars in repairing the garages, use as parking, spending a lot of money on a grim environment, or do we reimagine a modern campus for our community, one that interacted with the surroundings, and uh, we did choose a lesser. So in 2007, we adopted a campus master plan uh, following a consultative process. Uh, this is the 2019 version of the framework map. Uh, it did include several key elements. A uh, flexible framework for future growth, identifying specific sites for development. So the ISC was one such building uh, delivered after, under the master plan. Uh, it sought to develop a better environment for students, faculty and staff, uh, providing new open spaces such as the campus centre lawn. Uh, some new routes through our campus like Deacon's Walk, which connects residence hall uh, and U hall and better connections to our shoreline and our neighbours. Uh, in the nearby housing. Uh, importantly, it also sought to eliminate the problems with the substru substructure uh, pro by providing new parking garages. So we've got the West Garage over here. Uh, Future-proofing our uh, utilities by putting them under the ro new roadway through the UCRR project, which I know a lot of you live through, and permanently stabilizing our older buildings uh, of Wheatley and the Cormac. Uh, so after that whistle top store, what is happening now on campus whilst we speak? So SDQD is very much what's happening now, but I just want to identify some of the work we did last year to prepare for it. Uh, so firstly is the renovations to existing academics uh, buildings program, and that was to get the remaining academic programs in science uh, that hadn't been relocated to U-Haul or ISC out by spring 2020. So from the summer of 2019 into 2020, uh, we conducted a program gradually relocating the remaining tenants from the Science Centre. Uh, for example, previously the Math faculty were in the Science Centre, but are now in Wheatley 3, and CHNS have all decamped into Quinn, uh, spread across numerous floors in there. Uh, we also uh, relocated a lot of equipment. Uh, this is Baxter the robot, who lives in one of the engineering labs. Uh, designed as a mass market robot for manual labour. Uh, he was originally from Southie, but he's got a new home uh, with us in Dorchester. Uh, here are some of the teaching spaces. So on the top left there is the computer science Unix lab, uh, and the bottom right is the engineering uh, open lab. These are flexible spaces uh, for student projects and informal teaching. Uh, on the bottom right there is an SFE teaching lab with those sort of weird extraction arms to take away fumes and the like. Uh, and in the top right is the new Centre for Clinical Education and Research uh, in the nursing department. So this suite is designed to provide realistic environments for nursing students uh, and reflect true life in hospitals, sort of teaching students how to act quickly in medical events and providing sort of cultural and ethical dilemmas. So we now have two complete wards in the Quinn building with patient beds and mannequins as well as more intensive simulation and exam rooms. Uh, in those exam rooms, sorry, in the simulation rooms, uh, educators can interact and talk to students through the mannequins uh, via a new state-of-the-art computer system. So Simon, for... can I, Simon, can I interrupt yeah. you for a second? Yep. I think there are people trying to get into the brown bag, but the capacity okay. is at limit, if we can increase that. Okay. Um, sorry, to, uh, sorry to interrupt the flow. Reach out to John Jesso on that one. Um, uh, the Quinn building, uh, following uh, completion of the academic move pro regime, we zeroed in on the remaining tenants in the Science Centre. These were the 2020 moves, uh, or the pandemic moves, if you like. Um, uh, the first was the data centre. IT relocated this from Science to Quinn. Uh, this contains a whole lo uh, load of sort of very important uh, computer equipment that I don't fully understand, uh, but I use every day. Uh, IT accomplished this move over the summer of 2020 with minimal downtime and disruption. Uh, we also have the CSM machine shop, 
down in the uh, bowels of the Science Centre formerly, uh, historically used to fabricate teaching and research parts. Uh, they were relocated to service and supply, which involved several leapfrogging moves uh, for the focusing facilities, uh, myself included. Um, construction work for that was accomplished over the spring and summer of 2020. Uh, so it's a project that was started and finished under COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, the machine shop was moved in August 2020. So you can see one of the new bed mills weighing in at three and a three quarter tons, uh, which required sort of spreader plates to ensure we didn't crack the floor as we moved it. Uh, and a new two and a, and a half ton, um, 17 inch lathe uh, that was too long for the elevator, so needed to be craned in through the uh, window from the parking lot. Uh, the biology greenhouses, a uh, very popular subject. Uh, these were located uh, on the uh, roof to the Science Centre um, and are used for teaching research and house big collection of plants. Um, so I do see that we have uh, increased the capacity. So apologies for that. This is by far the most popular brown bag I think we've ever done. Um, so I'm just going to let people a little while to enter. And as Kathleen said, uh, this recording will be available uh, for people after the event, and I will email around uh, the link uh, to that so people know where to go and you'll be able to review the slides as they go. Um, so uh, probably, perhaps that's on me, I underestimated the level of enthusiasm uh, for people uh, for this campus. So I'm just going to give it a moment. Okay. So we'll just, I mean, you've sort of fixed on a nice little picture here. You can see the greenhouse there looking splendid in the sun with the ISC in the background uh, and Healy there. So the biology department's greenhouses were located on the roof to the Science Centre. Uh, these house a collection of plants native to tropical desert and temperate climates. Um, so we have built them a new greenhouse there. Uh, originally built as a temporary greenhouse, but it's very much uh, more of a permanent feature now. Uh, and as you can see from here, it is fully supplied with uh, water, uh, heat, so the plants don't freeze during the winter, uh, and light. Moving on, all this work uh, led up to STQD, uh, and that does stand for the Substructure Science Centre Pool Building and Plaza Demolition and Quadrangle Development Project. So in answer to your question, John, yes, you have saved me, thank you. Um, so the Science Centre there was uh, identified early on in the master plan as being too expensive to renovate uh, and providing substandard facilities for faculty and students. So anyone who had been in there uh, and saw the leaks could probably confirm that. Uh, but its demolition does enable uh, the main event of our new and more welcoming campus, campus which is the new quad. Moving on, this slide knits together the challenges associated with SDQD and the interdependencies. Um, so we have the substructure repairs over here, numbers one to safeguard Wheatley and McCormack. Uh, we have the relocation of the existing tenants or the previous tenants, if you like, the Science Center out into U-Haul over here, ISC over here, and to the renovated uh, academic buildings around the perimeter, the Science Centre. Uh, we have the demolition of the pool and plaza and the demolition of the Science Centre. Uh, we also have our need, and this is a challenge, to reprovide the parking that's required and that will be lost at Bayside. And then number six, we do have sort of uh, the whole point of it, which is the, the better campus focal point and gathering space, the new quad. So this image down here, uh, shows the um, areas that we're demolishing. So uh, most of it's gone now. You can see the Science Centre is gone, uh, along with the plaza and the uh, pool. Uh, you may have seen that not all of the plaza is going. Some is staying and being repaired. Uh, so this sort of image here shows you where the demolition line is. So imagine you're standing on where the plaza used to be, looking down. Uh, towards Healy there with uh, McCormack on your left, the old science centre on your right. So everything on the right of this red line has now gone away. Everything on the left of it stays and gets repaired. And that's quite important because, uh, as you're probably well aware, 
all our entrances to our buildings from the Cormac, Wheatley, and Quinn are all at this level. So we do need to keep that plaza at that level. And this does sort of highlight one of the key challenges in the quad design and does influence everything we're doing, uh, which is the elevation of change. So what we need to do is we need to get from the plaza level. So how you get into Wheatley over there, how you get into McCormack here, and that's at elevation 49. We need to get down to Beacons Walk at elevation 24, which is a drop of 25 feet or two stories. And if you remember that image, um, for those of you who were on the call back then, uh, of the original canvas, uh, we had that sort of double uh, story height of garage going around the edge of the buildings. Uh, and we need to negotiate that drop. Uh, but like all good challenges, it's also an opportunity. And what that does provide us with the opportunity uh, to provide a variety of spaces in the quad at different elevations. So here is the current layout of the new quad. Uh, it stretches from Quinn uh, across to the campus center. Uh, it goes from elevation 49 at the plaza down to elevation 24 at Beacon's Lot. Uh, it provides the new uh, sort of 308 parking spaces um, to replace Bayside. Uh, and it does provide this sort of network of routes through the new quads to connect all our buildings. So to help orientate you, this is Quinn, and this is Campus Centre, and this area here is where the Science Centre used to be. So Helium and Cormac will sort of overlook it. And we'll have this new network of routes that flows through the quad. So say you're, I don't know, a member of the chemistry faculty and you're teaching a class at University Hall, you'll now be able to come out the back, uh, trek across the uh, quad through this network of routes, uh, crossing then down to the IC, back to your research lab or your office or wherever it is. If you're a nursing student and you're getting uh, dinner at the campus centre dining hall, you'll be able to shoot out and go straight across the plaza like you would previously, uh, but this time you have a much better experience because it'll all be new, repaired, and you'll be able, also be able to look over the amazing new quad uh, as you move. Uh, and needless to say, because I know this was a question that we received beforehand, um, all these paths are ADA compliant. So they are accessible to all. Uh, we do have the required uh, sort of uh, ADA uh, car parking down here, nice and close to the um, path so that um, everyone can benefit from this uh, new quad. Um, we do also have some distinct spaces in the quad for sort of recreational programming and uh, drainage. So this is the upper lawn. So this is campus center over here uh, and McCormack here. Uh, this is a sort of a flat area of grass with a gently sloping slide, slopes up towards uh, campus center, slopes up towards uh, McCormack. Uh, and there are some provisional ideas there uh, for um, how this might be used. So for example, um, you know, we could use it for uh, Frisbee or whatever, but I think we very much be looking for the uh, students uh, to lead on how we're going to program those spaces. Uh, the central plaza, which is bracketed by granite blocks uh, to create a sort of informal seating area. So you can see the types of granite blocks that we're envisaging there. Uh, this will provide informal seating. We're thinking possibly also a good spot for graduation photos. Uh, and it's also going to be an area where we're sort of envisaging food trucks being able to park. Uh, we can provide uh, access for them to come up to the parking lot and create a sort of event space at the high of our new campus. Uh, the picnic grove. So if you can imagine Healy here and McCormack here uh, overlooking the quad, uh, the picnic grove will be sited um, sort of in front of Healy. Uh, we'll have some sort of timber benches um, which will enable you to sort of sit each lunch and dare I say it, uh, work um, overlooking the quad. Remember you will be two stories up here uh, versus what Beacons Walk is. So you'll be looking over the quad and seeing everything down below, below you. Uh, we also have these four bays, uh, which run across the quad and are used to control stormwater runoff during the rain events uh, and clean it before discharging it. Uh, these are similar one to the ones in the West Garage, uh, which I've sort of included there to give you an idea of what they uh, are. So they're sort of shallow depressions. Uh, you can see these sort of white lines of contour lines 
you can see them uh, sites so steeply falling away to clear that depression. Uh, we can also plant those with sort of cattails to increase uh, encourage biodiversity. Uh, and just to make a point that um, whilst we're all very excited, uh, these are flat images and I'm conscious of that, but we have uh, commissioned some sort of 3D visualizations that our marketing team are looking uh, to deploy in the near future. Uh, and that will be uh, sort of uh, a, assisting you in visualizing what that's going to look like uh, and really bring it to life. So please do uh, stay tuned for those. Uh, if you're not on UMB social media, uh, get on to it because there's something to look forward to. Uh, on to changes to the building. Uh, and I know there was a question uh, about this uh, prior to the um, uh, webinar being uh, started. Uh, so we're well aware that there's currently no level access uh, to the Healy Library from the plaza. Um, so we are going to be creating a new plaza level entry to Healy uh, and installing a replacement stair and elevator. So those of you who've been on campus and have been aware of it um, previous there, basically the new stair sort of follows the existing uh, or the previous position, bringing you up onto the catwalk and then you can go through uh, into the vestibule. But we will be also constructing a new elevator to take people from the plaza uh, up into the uh, new vestibule so that everyone uh, can access it that way and we no longer have people excluded uh, from that. Uh, I can see there's a few questions coming in on the Q&A, so we will uh, get to those um, later on in the presentation. Uh, there's Quinn, which currently sort of disgorges at plaza level uh, up here uh, and here and at UL level. So if you imagine this is where the nursing uh, suite is, uh, this is the catwalk coming across and public safety over here. Uh, this is a lady standing in the quad, uh, sort of overlooking. Uh, so you're going to be able to see a lot more when uh, and we are going to make some minor improvements to the entrances. Uh, and just on that vein, there will be some sort of more minor uh, improvements to the entrances to the in Cormac to sort of improve the thresholds uh, and things like that, where we tie in uh, to keep people um, moving freely through those buildings. So. Moving on, this shows the alterations to Clark and just help you orientate yourself. Um, this is the existing entrance or the previous entrance. I've got to get my tenses right here. Uh, this is the gym. This is the rink. Here's Quinn. Here's where the pool is. So you used to be able to come in off the plaza at level one, plaza level. So that will be converted into this sort of glazed box, creating a new lounge in Clark. There'll be a new open air, a UL level quad level entrance to Clark. Remember, we're dropping those two stories. We've got one story here, and that's where you're going to come in. There'll also be this new ramp leading down towards the West Garage to allow people to provide direct access. So there will be, uh, you have to use your imagination sort of to see the West Garage there. And then this will take you across uh, to the parking lot. So let's go inside that new box. So uh, this will sort of be the view. Uh, it will be slightly different. We'll have um, a better view from this with our marketing team will uh, shortly, but it does sort of give you an idea of the sort of scale of the quad and what you're going to be able to see uh, once we do have the development complete. Uh, just wanted to show you a brief aerial view. In it, you can see the Science Centre here, the big dirt mound, uh, his campus centre in Wheatley. So Science Centre and dirt mound. Uh, and then sort of the amazing new quad and how that sort of changes how we all feel about our campus. We have a new heart and it improves the quality of open space. Okay, and just sort of finalize before we move on to the other construction pro uh, programs. Here is uh, progress. Uh, you can see some of the plaza clearance works uh, undertaken. So this was in the summer last year. Uh, all the pavers ripped up from the plaza. That's Quinn. That's Healy. Um, we've got a little machine taking them off here. Here's a sort of slightly earlier stage between the Cormac and the Science Centre, halfway through taking up those plazas. Uh, the um, planters have been demolished. Um, here's demolition of the pool building back in the summer of last year. You can see they're about two thirds of the way through, uh, one third to go. Uh, here's an aerial shot uh, from Healy 11 taken in December. 
Uh, this shows them demo uh, demolishing the plaza. You can still see some areas of the plaza remain. Here's Quinn. Here's the science center. You can see the parking garages underneath there. That's the progress there as we do sort of crunch our way up towards Healy. Uh, this just to sort of show, because I know there's a question about how people are moving across the plaza level uh, during construction. Uh, this shows the uh, plaza level uh, pathway. So it runs from Quinn all the way to the front of McCormack, uh, through the McCormack lobby, and then out to Wheatley. And that does keep people safe from construction uh, and it is fully ADA compliant so that everyone can move across uh, as things stand. Um, here is the demolition of the west and north side of the Science Centre from February. Uh, we do have sort of them tearing down the corner of the building. And you can also see the uh, garage level underneath, gives you an idea of the sort of the original construction of the building with everything sitting on the plaza there. Uh, this shows progress on the Science Centre demolition. Uh, so down here, looking from Campus Centre drop-off, uh, you can now see Healy. Uh, up here, looking from the plaza, uh, you can see one of the greenhouses is gone. Uh, this fellow here, he's next on the chopping block. Uh, and then this shows you sort of where we are now. So this was the final stage of the demolition of the science centre, which was the freight elevator uh, near campus centre being pulled down there. Uh, and then this is the view from the plaza, standing outside uh, McCormack, looking across where the science centre used to be. Uh, you can now see the entirety of Campus Center and you can see U Hall. And then, off in the distance, you can see the Massachusetts archives. Previously, the vast majority of that was blocked by the Science Center. Uh, lastly, a plug for the SDQD webcam. I know a lot of people are aware of that for those who aren't. This is mounted on Clark uh, and shows the site of the new quad. It's updated every 10 minutes uh, and it's a good way of keeping in touch uh, with what's going on uh, in campus. Uh, this is the current schedule for SDQD. Uh, just some key takeaways. Uh, demolition will be finished by June this year. Uh, the repaired plaza uh, is going to be coming online along with the sort of parapets and the new railings. Uh, and they're going to start turning that over to us from the sort of late summer this year into the summer of 2022. That's going to be a phase turnover. Uh, the Healy elevator and stairs, they're going to be finished by the winter of 2020. 2021 and 2022. Uh, the changes to all our buildings should be complete uh, by sort of mid to late 2022. Uh, and then the overall quad development, which is this sort of blue area here, uh, that includes the piling, which is going to be undertaken during the summer of this year. But then that's going to be followed by the uh, structural uh, supports, which are going to be ongoing throughout the rest of 2022. Uh, and then we also undertake earthworks, utilities, and then the hard and soft landscaping, which is things like the paths and the plantings, um, which are going to be uh, undertaken in sort of the late area of 2022, all with a target to finish sort of November, December time uh, at the end of 2022. So very much everything sort of jams up to finish then. So it's probably another uh, almost two years of construction. Uh, to get us towards the end point. Okay, I think maybe we'll we'll take uh, questions at the very end. Uh, why don't we, I think, Simon, why don't we, a lot of the questions are SGQD related. Okay, okay. Why don't we field those now and then yep. we can focus on... Um, yeah, sure. Um, okay, so... Okay, so we've got quite a few questions. So uh, starting with Ethel, what is the surface of the accessible pathways? Uh, it is nice, nice and smooth coming up to Plaza, I believe, Carl. Um, yeah, asphalt uh, yeah. for the pathways through the through the Plaza until you get to the pavers at the um, at the Plaza level that you showed. And also, just reinforcing that it's completely um, ADA, ADA accessible. Nice slow grades from the parking lot up to the Plaza. Okay, okay so that takes care of the question from. Uh, Lee as well. Uh, we have quite a few questions about the catwalks. Um, here. So on the catwalks, let me let me address that. Um, obviously, you know, you know the campus. The catwalks were integral to the science center, so they needed to be torn down to allow the 
science center to be torn down. There will be at least an academic year and a half, and a half of no catwalks, except for the ones that are re remain right now. And the project team, the Mass Building Authority, et cetera, are working to um, find a way to build the catwalks at the end of the project. Excellent. Um, well, uh, curious about how the timeline has been affected by campus closure. Have we been able to speed things up at all? Uh, with less people on campus. Yeah, we. I mean, we've advanced obviously the the demolition, um, removal of the existing catwalks, and other work that you know obviously would have been a lot more challenging uh, had the campus population been full. Um, so we have um, somewhat of a mixed blessing. You know, the the remote of the students has provided an opportunity to uh, advance construction. Uh, Ahead of, or not so much ahead of schedule, but just to advance uh, heavy, difficult construction. Yeah, so I did, it's, a real, it's a real benefit that we've been able to get uh, all of the demolition pretty much uh, completed when uh, there hasn't really been a huge population uh, on campus. So uh, not that that's a good thing that no one's been on campus, but uh, very much a fractional silver lining there. Uh, a question on whether the pool will be replaced. Um, there currently are no plans or fully realized plans to replace the pool building. Um, that'll be something sort of as part of a long, lot larger conversation with the campus community um, in forthcoming events. So will there be accommodations for everyone back on campus and the plaza is not done? Uh, Pathways great, but it can be tight when not people are walking. Uh, will there be other pathways or will it be expanded? As Simon mentioned, I mean, the plaza will be turned over in, in phases. Um, so, you know, we're working with the construction team, you know, to open up areas that will, uh, you know, currently for those that, that have been on campus, you know, you're taking the temporary walkway over into Wheatley and up and going across the, the catwalk that remains there. You know, we're working to have the plaza portion open there so you can get directly over to the campus center to avoid going into Wheatley and up and over. Um, so, but it will be a phase. One thing that's difficult to tell from the slides is a good portion of what will be the future plaza that you walk across is a structural void that's needed to be added. So right now, you know, the pathways are working within the current, uh, that earlier slide where Simon showed the red line the demo line. So as that to the right of the demo line gets built back up, that offers a greater walking area, which will ultimately be the finished condition for the plaza uh, when we're done. Uh, Simon, just quickly seeing the uh, question on the asphalt, uh, permeable. I mean, all of the asphalt in the uh, conditions in the plaza are all factored into the uh, calculated runoffs uh, that Simon mentioned some of the detention basins uh, specifically if it's permeable I'd have to double check but uh, all of the runoff is accounted for treated and before it's discharged uh, through the storm drains. Okay uh, and then we've got a question from Joyce about what plans being in place to assist those with disabilities to navigate the campus uh, while the TV constructed catwalks are not available. So um, just Briefly, I think the the uh, the temporary path is ADA compliant, and the entire plaza uh, and quad have been designed to be ADA compliant as well. So everyone should be able to go in the same locations and between the same buildings in the same fashion. Uh, as we look towards a full reopening, whatever that may be, um, we're definitely happy to reach out to Joyce and talk to you in more detail about sort of uh, the sort of smaller things we can do to to help uh, maintain uh, access for those with disabilities uh, to get where they need to be. So, okay. What is being done to mitigate vibrations in helium quin during pile driving? We do have vibration monitoring set up uh, to monitor vibration and alert us if there's an issue so we can notify the contractor and he can act accordingly. Uh, and we're doing something similar for noise. Uh, the pile driving has been, unfortunately, is necessary, uh, but the pile driving nearest to the buildings 
uh, has been selected to be um, drilled piles, which are less intrusive. Uh, so that will reduce uh, noise. And there will be, uh, just so you know, Patty, we're going to be discussing that more this afternoon. And the vibration monitoring equipment has been in place for a few weeks yeah. now, getting baseline readings uh, in five areas, you know, Quinn, ISC, Healy, one in McCormick and one in the campus center. So all, all critical areas uh, as recommended by the uh, engineers. Okay, and just, um, we are gonna talk about the pump house. Uh, student classes will be held, have been reprovided as rehab, under rehab uh, in various locations uh, across our existing buildings uh, and in U-Haul. Uh, we are looking at landscaping the area between Quinn and Clark. Uh, there is some empty space there, but there's also a lot of utilities in that, either side of that narrow ramp to answer Jonathan Lee's question. So we're sort of restricted on what we can put in that space. And it does provide access to some more buildings. Um, so athletics facilities would need to be discussed as, as part of any broader community uh, discussion on the uh, update to the master plan. We're gonna to touch on that process uh, later. Uh, the, to answer Maureen's question on snow, uh, that the sort of pathways have all been uh, vetted by our grounds team and our facilities team to make sure they're comfortable uh, clearing them all in the snow, uh, wind and rain. They know the campus better than uh, anything anyone else. So uh, if they're happy, I'm happy. Um, I think that's probably it. Um, so I don't know if you, you want to move on to uh, our other construction. Uh, project Scott? Yes, thank you, Simon. Um, well, so while the uh, SDQD project gets most of the attention, there are several other significant projects either underway or planned. A few current projects, uh, which I'll discuss in more detail in a couple of slides, are the roof replacement at McCormick and Quinn buildings, replacement of the chillers at the Clark Athletics, and resurfacing of the campus center garage. We have other, several other projects that are in schematic design, repairs to the Harbor Walk that surrounds the campus. The area for repairs extends from Morrissey Boulevard to the pump house near the entrance to the JFK Library, uh, almost at the intersection with Beacons Walk. Uh, repairs to, at the service and supply loading docks which support operations. Replacement of the air handling units at the Healy Library which are aged and inefficient as well as an overall assessment and protection program uh, for the brick facades uh, on which cover most, most of our buildings. Uh, these projects are all critical to UMass Boston and are funded in part through matching funds from the Commonwealth through their Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance. Uh, other projects that are in construction are, are ADA handrails within the ISC connector and then uh, flagpole installation, upgrade of vivarium lighting controls, installation of submeters at, uh, for electric gas usage monitoring, and campus center compressor replacement, which failed. And other completed projects include solar panels, battery storage, and EV chargers, which I'll talk about in a, in a, in a minute or so. Looking at the uh, roof replacement projects, these are done. Many of our roofs have reached their, the end of their useful life and are being replaced with mechanically fastened uh, roofs, which provide greater protection and are designed uh, to, for protection against hurricane force winds. Uh, when doing a roof replacement project, other components are added to the project, uh, including the addition or replacement of roof drains to handle the roof uh, runoff water, as well as uh, upgrading or uh, adding roof anchors that are required during uh, maintenance work done on these roofs. This slide, excuse me, gives you an example of uh, issues we've been dealing with. In the upper left, you're seeing uh, roof water ponding. And in the bottom right, you're seeing sandbags that were used as an interim means to hold down the roof membranes, which were uh, failing. Uh, in addition to address some immediate concerns, um, we've installed uh, some 
some pumps to pump the water that uh, you see in the upper, uh, upper left of this screen. Once the water gets beneath the, the roof membrane, it can no longer get to the roof drain and it saturates the insulation and then up eventually works its way into the buildings. Simon, it doesn't look like the um, hyperlink to that little video piece of it works. Yeah, it might be because we're on that. Anyway. Oh, no, there it goes. Sorry, I guess it. Oh, wow. so this is just a, an example of, you know, they installed several of these to, to capture the water that was uh, beneath the rain, beneath the roof membrane, you know, just as an interim way to uh, limit the amount of uh, water infiltration we were dealing with. And those were, those were helpful uh, in terms of just getting the volume of water off of the roof while this project is underway. At the Clark Athletic Center, we replaced uh, two chiller units needed to support making of ice for hockey and other recreational uses. The previous chillers had failed and a temporary chiller was in place outside of Clark uh, for a period of time, which is now gone. A few pictures of the uh, equipment that was done in, installed and that is now all complete and ready for this upcoming hockey season. Uh, the Campus Center garage resurfacing, um, they address localized areas of spalled concrete um, that were either uh, chiseled down, you know, made smooth, and then an entire new surface of uh, protection, epoxy protection uh, on the garage driving surface, as well as painting of the lines, painting of all the uh, uh, parking designated spots in the campus center garage, as well as those for HP parking. Uh, not all of the projects on our campus are deferred maintenance. Others are done as either improvements to the campus to meet code requirements or offer energy efficiencies. Exa examples include uh, installation of flagpoles at the rotary from B and Cooley Drive. This will offer another visual welcome to the campus to complement the monumental sign at the other end of off of U Drive North at the residence halls. Uh, installation of railings along the connector between ISC and Quinn to meet code. And then a larger project that we just completed was the installation of solar panels on the roof troughs of the West Garage, which you see in the picture. There are also solar panels at the University Hall. Uh, these are to offset electricity costs. The solar panels generate upwards of one, one megawatt of power. Uh, also included in the project was a battery storage array, which you see in the bottom left. Uh, this stores the power generated and is used to reduce demand during peak periods, which ultimately reduces the overall cost of power to UMass Boston. This project was, and there are also 11 charge, electric charging stations at the West Garage, which are fed from the solar energy. Uh, so this project was done in a, under a joint agreement with an Anel X, a provider of solar equipment and results in an uh, estimated one and a half million savings to UMass Boston. At this time, I'll uh, turn the presentation over to Dennis Swinford, our Director of Master Planning. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the good thing about planning projects are we're gonna have a lot of opportunities to talk more about these. Um, and so I will go quickly through and give you a status on where they are currently. We have two projects uh, uh, that are in our athletics uh, portfolio, one being the Clark Locker Room projects, making it more equitable for our women uh, athletes um, as it's compared to our men's athletes. And then uh, the other is to redo the softball field, um, to, again, to make, it, uh, to make it a bit more equitable uh, a, a between Monin Field and um, our softball teams. Those are two under underway in, in design, and we hope to have those completed as soon as possible. Um, and then the other big project that we're working on in campus planning is to update the last campus planning project that was done. There are three kind of connected efforts that are related to physical planning um, that we are engaged in, but physical master planning, um, we will have several different phases within the campus master plan. We anticipate starting it um, in the fall and uh, 
probably taking about a year uh, to complete uh, the different phases, existing conditions, creating a master plan program, looking at alternatives in terms of how to accommodate that program uh, in within our existing conditions, and then a draft plan and a final plan. And both uh, the university strategic plan, which the chancellor is working on uh, with um, uh, uh, with the community, the physical master plan, then go in uh, to create a really great capital campaign. So those are the kind of three policy uh, documents that help frame uh, the physical environment on the campus. And I'm really excited about being here and starting on the update. Uh, Dorchester Bay City, I'm sure you all have heard about this project. Uh, it is being uh, completed uh, for us by our um, sister institution, the UMBA. Uh, and I wanted to point out just quickly some of the great public open spaces that are going to be made uh, in part of that project. This is going through uh, the public review process now with the developers that have been selected. So there's going to be a lot of great new spaces created in the project, um, along with um, buildings and a mixed use, a mixed use new urban district uh, right, uh, right on the point. Uh, and this is one of the renderings that are um, that, are, that the developer have been showing to the community and uh, been used been using during their entitlement process with the city of Boston. Uh, but closer uh, and uh, closer to home, uh, and just right at our right at our gateway, as our chancellor uh, has said, is our calf pasture pumping station. And we are planning on uh, working with the UMBA and creating another public private partnership that would help um, help us redevelop the calf pasture pumping station and uh, the, the land parcels next to it. Um, a little bit more detail, you can see the calf pasture pumping station uh, here underneath the yellow, and then the two yellow boxes are the land that we will make available to the developers um, for, uh, for that project, approximately six acres. However, a little bit different from uh, the um, Dorchester Bay City project is that we have an advisory committee here on the campus that's going to be working with the UMBA and the developer as they go through the process. Uh, these are the, this is the membership of that advisory committee. Uh, if you have, you, I'm sure many of you know these people and these people are probably on the call. Uh, if you have comments and thoughts about uh, uses for the calf pasture pumping station and the adjacent land, you know, please uh, feel free to shoot any of us an email. Uh, because right now we are in the process of brainstorming issues and ideas. This is to some extent a flowchart of a process um, where we have the review and introduction of our committee coming up this Friday. And then pretty quickly, kind of every week, we have another meeting where um, we will be brainstorming ideas and issues that we want to then share with our leadership uh, at the campus. And then they will share it uh, with uh, the UMBA. Uh, the, really the product of this is to look at creating draft principles uh, and criteria that can be shared with the development team uh, when, it, uh, when it gets selected so that our, um, what we, we want to have happen and our, our desires are developed on those two pieces of land. And, and the calf pasture pumping station, importantly, maybe most importantly, the calf pasture pumping station, the historic building is put into a reuse uh, that we are all proud of. Uh, and at that point in time, really glad you're all here, all 136 of you. That's great turnout. If you have any questions, we have um, a master plan at UMBA, uh, UMB. Um, edu you can send us more questions and um, construction related issues you can send us um, an email at facilities at umb.edu uh, or give us a call so thank you with that um, I think we will go ahead and clear some of the questions Simon are you yeah I'll, uh, I think I'll take the questions I've been thank you Michael I've been prepared I've been kind of reading them as they've been coming up so uh, John asked do we plan to purchase cargo vans provide parking for those vans to move material sensitive equipment transporting between buildings. I think materials moment has definitely changed because of SDQD, you know, the, the sub, a lot of the substructure is gone. So I think that's an operational question that's come up in a number of different arenas. I think each group needs to look at their needs and uh, develop a plan on how to handle that. And um, uh, perhaps it gets socialized centrally at some point um, as those plans get developed. Sean asks, what is being done about air 
air handling and air quality, McCormick and Wheatley. Those two buildings have a lot of HVAC issues over the years. Um, what we've been doing, one of the things we've been doing as COVID has been kind of enveloping us and we've been on campus, you know, facilities has remained on campus is we've been doing a lot of maintenance on all the air handlers to make sure they're working properly. We've upgraded the air filters per CDC and other regulatory uh, recommendations to MERV 13, which is a higher particulate uh, capture uh, filter. So the air quality coming through those air handlers should be improved because of the better filters. Um, we also do have a project to replace one of the air handlers in McCormick. In Carl's world of deferred maintenance, all of the equipment on campus, air handlers, generators, you know, pretty much everything is on a list and on a schedule to be replaced or uh, repaired over time. Uh, Sean also makes a statement, serious concerns about high winds and no catwalks for pedestrians. Um, We'll, have, we'll monitor what happens over the in the near future and over the next year or so and uh, take all that into consideration. Uh, another question about the catwalks. Um, they will not be in place, as I said before, for an academic year and a half, and we're striving to um, build catwalks at the end of the project. When will car charging plugs in the West Garage be turned on? Uh, they're being worked on now or finalized right now for the um, rates to be charged for the chargers. Uh, it's not free. Um, the plan is to have those on, at this point, the plan is to have those on for Earth Week, which is mid-April, second week of April, I think. So in the very near future. Uh, what is the plan regarding parking if we turn return fall 2021? West Garage and Bayside will be our parking areas. Um, Lot D, if you didn't know, is being used for construction storage of crushed materials that are going to go back into the, the hole that we're creating by tearing out the science center. So Bayside will reopen as parking and West Garage is open now as parking. Another question about HVAC and um, bathrooms, warm water, soap available. We always have soap available. We always have towels available. Um, we put a lot of uh, automated towel dispensers in rather than the uh, blowers, which um, the towels are better for containing the spread of uh, germs. And CDC, we do have hot water in all of the, all the restrooms. It may not seem it. it, may take a little while for the hot water or the warm water to get to your hands, but uh, it does exist. Um, CDC does not require uh, warm water. Cold wa Washing hands with cold water is as effective as washing hands with warm water, but we do have warm water. So that's a definitive yes on that. Is there a plan for a deep clean of buildings prior to September? So one of the benefits we've been cleaning, we've been constantly cleaning. We've kept three shifts of cleaning all through the COVID crisis. So um, I believe the campus is probably cleaner now than, than it has ever been because of the lack of occupants in the building. We've had an opportunity to clean, re-clean, and in, in some cases, clean areas that we had trouble getting at to clean. So. Uh, I would say that that's a yes, that it's already underway or all, already completed. Is an underground walkway being considered when weather is a severe factor? Uh, we're trying to determine if what's left of the substructure can provide some underground walking um, walking path, but we're not at the point where um, we can say definitively on that yet. Uh, how is the campus center bus bay being rethought to allow for socially distanced access to public transportation? Uh, Kathleen, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Diane, I believe, is talking about social distancing on the buses, less people on the buses, and perhaps even more buses to accommodate the, the volume of the UMass Boston community. I think the, the parking and transportation department is looking at, um, you know, having the shuttle bus in compliance with the latest CDC guidance. And so there'll be definitely more information coming out about that as, as plans are made to return to campus. Offices that are locked have not been cleaned. How will that be done if the cleaning employees don't have access to locked offices? Uh, if anybody wants to let us in their offices, just submit a work order to facilities uh, service response and we will go in and clean anything that anybody wants cleaned. What's being done to reinforce the substructure of Wheatley and McCormick? A significant amount, uh, Maureen, good question. It's part of the project that's really unseen uh, because of the great landscaping and the demolition and all that that's visible, but 
uh, selective demolition of areas of concrete and steel in the substructures of McCormick and Wheatley are being cut out, uh, re-reinforced with new rebar, which is um, steel that goes inside concrete to strengthen it, and new, <coughs> excuse me, new fresh concrete uh, through a process called shotcrete is being poured or sprayed into those areas. We are also putting structural steel. We're also putting structural steel in the substructures for seismic bracing, which is brings them up to um, current code. So there's a significant amount of work. It's a very good question that goes unseen. Um, you know, the goal obviously is to make those those substructures the foundations of McCormick and Wheatley and reestablish the structure of those foundations, the strength of those foundations for decades to come. A clarification somebody's recommending to me for um, cleaning. Um, cl we don't move people's things. Um, our cleaners don't. So uh, we can go in and clean the floors and clean around desks, but we, you know, we wouldn't um, move anybody's contents. We don't, um, we don't do that. So we can work with anybody that if they want to move their contents, we can go in and clean um, when the area is ready. Just like I said, just put your requests into facilities, service response, and we'll work with you to um, make sure it's clean. Is there a plan to build a recreation or wellness center that houses multiple departments and allows for the UMass Boston and local community to use it? This is something as well as if we have a future pool building that would come out of the master planning process that Dennis mentioned. So all of these concepts and ideas will be entertained, um, you know, validated to some degree, and then campus leadership will decide what direction we go in with um, different, um, different concepts for the campus for the next decade and beyond. Well, last question I have here is, will the water systems be flushed before uh, being reoccupied? We've actually been doing that, Patty. We've done that a couple of times. And... We have our water tested on a regular basis and uh, we've had, I think one test come back as um, not acceptable, a below acceptable level. And we retested and it was a false positive or a, a false negative. So the water systems, uh, part, you know, we part of what the cleaners are doing are they're exercising all the plumbing fixtures while they're cleaning the restrooms and uh, um, the water is being moved through the building so it doesn't get stale, which is I think what you're getting at. Uh, there's a chat that I don't understand. I think they're only answering in the Q&A because they didn't answer my request for closed captioning through the chat. I guess, did somebody ask for closed captioning of this presentation? I guess we didn't put that on. Apologize for that. What about some of the ripe refrigerators in many departments? Will they be cleaned? Yeah, that's going to be an issue when people come back. Um, We've been trying to get at ones that uh, we can get at, but I think there's going to be some when people come back. So again, put a put a work order into facilities, and we'll take care of it. I believe that's everything. Hopefully, we covered all the questions. Very, you know, very good questions. Thank you very much. And um, that concludes the the brown bag. Thank you, everybody, for attending. <laughs>